Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number two in the book of Philemon. This is an amazing letter that we have before us. It's one chapter, 25 verses, and we're going to start today where Paul is praying for Philemon. Now, this is a letter that is is sent to a man named Philemon. Carrying the letter is this person, Onesimus, and it's very individual. It's very personal. It's a letter from Paul, quote unquote, to uh, Philemon regarding this person, Onesimus, who also is happens to be the guy that's carrying the letter. Now, here's the amazing thing about this in my mind today is this is we we get a window in here we get a peek of a letter of us of an individual paul writing to another individual uh philemon regarding a, a, a conflict that he's having with anisimus and we get a peek into this and eventually the church recognized hey, this is not a letter of an individual to an individual this is the letter from god himself to the entire planet so probably the first understanding was this was an area that the, the planet we're talking about was Philemon's planet, if you will. But then we realized that, oh, man, this is this is really for for everybody. So so listen in with me. We're going to we're in the middle of the letter. We're not going to finish it here today. This is from Philemon. I'm going to start in verse number six and read to 12 or so. You'll get just a hint of the conflict. Verse 6, and I pray that the sharing of your faith, Philemon's faith, his fellowship, may be effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because of the hearts of the saints that have been refreshed through you. This is Paul's uh, talking to Philemon. Accordingly, Though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, now an old man and a prisoner, also for Christ Jesus. I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. Verse 12, I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. All right, so what Paul is saying is I want you to see your faith, our faith, become active and productive in a real-life situation. I want to see your faith bring about the right decision in this particular uh, situation. And in a sense, I could order you to do this. There's authority in the church, and I'm at the top of the, the authority chain, but I'm not doing that. I do outrank you, but I'm not pulling rank on this. I'm, I'm letting the Holy Spirit and the Lord bring this uh, to you. So I'm calling in all your all my markers. He, he says to, he says I'm trying to call to you higher and urge you and exhort you and and request this of you. I'm trying to call you to be by my side to be a fellowship with me in do, in kind of doing the right thing. So let's let's reason together on this. That's what that's what Paul is saying. The first thing he does is he reminds Philemon who he is and how, how what an active person he is in the church and how he's been doing the right thing. And then he kind of on the side slyly reminds Philemon about who Paul is. I'm your boss. I'm an old man. I'm a prisoner for Christ. So you probably should listen to me. And halfway through this letter, verse 10, almost halfway, uh, finally he mentions the guy who the whole letter is really about. And he describes Onesimus right away as, a, as my child. You remember the the verse in John, John said a similar concept uh, in 3 John chapter 1, verse 4. I have no greater joy than to see my children are walking in the truth. And Paul describes the Corinthians, uh, for I became a father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. And he, in, in Galatians, Paul says to them, my, he's appealing to the Galatians, you know, you knuckleheads. But he says, my children, my little children. So first thing Paul says about Onesimus is this guy, Onesimus, is my child. I'm the father of him. He was converted under my ministry during my imprisonment, uh, probably within the last four or five years. And he's done something wrong. Now, we don't know exactly what it is. He's either a slave, which is uh, an involuntary uh, for uh, he's an involuntary worker for life, or he's a bond servant, which is a voluntary worker for life. Either way, he's broke. He's broke the work contract. Maybe some people think that maybe he stole that Onesimus stole from Philemon, um, and theoretically, 
Onesimus is supposed to be a thousand miles away. So this letter was written when Onesimus was with Paul in Rome. And now he has carried all the way back home, a thousand miles, back to, back to Colossae, where Philemon is. And at the time, at this moment in time, in 62 AD, Tychicus was also called to carry the most valuable thing on the planet, which was the letter to the Colossians. Tychicus was called to carry that letter to the Colossians. And this letter, Onesimus was charged with carrying the most valuable thing on at least Philemon's planet, the word of God, the communication, a message from God, to back to Philemon. And since that time, it's been recognized, no, this letter was, yes, it's from to Philemon, but it's also for the, for the whole world. So you may ask, well, if only God would talk to me, what would he say? And this letter is recognized as authoritative. That is, it's by the author of the universe. So the church church fathers eventually recognized this as this is not just a letter to Philemon. This is a letter to the whole world. This is from God. So all along it was from God, just wasn't probably recognized at that. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 says that no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men in this case, Paul, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're saying. That's what the church has eventually recognized this letter as. This letter isn't from Paul, in a sense. It's from it's from God. So initially, it was thought to be a letter to change Philemon's planet and later the whole planet. So literally, Philemon here is getting a letter from God. So my, my big thought today for us is, hey, what if we literally got a letter from God today? What would it say? Would it be a letter of comfort? You know, God knows humanity and sickness and mental illness and death. He, he knows that. Maybe, it's a, maybe it would be a letter of comfort. Or maybe it would be a letter of help. Maybe he would elucidate a way of escape for a temptation that you face. Maybe it would be an encouragement to believe. Maybe it would be an encouragement for you, like in this case, which it is in Philemon, an encouragement for you to forgive and restore this guy who's wronged you, and this Mrs. wronged you, Philemon, to forgive and restore him. We could get a letter like that today. Maybe it would be a call to fellowship or something we've forgotten. Maybe a call to justice, which this letter kind of is as well, or maybe purity. So here's the final thought today. If God wrote me a letter, I think he'd say this, dot, dot, dot. May he speak that letter to your spirit today. Thanks for listening.